Okay, a very quick walkthrough of making a simple animation, simple game using the MIT tool Scratch. I've gone to the website scratch.mit.edu. Um, I've logged into my account, but you don't need to register for an account in order to be able to do any of this. We have in the interface here a stage. This is 480 dots across, 360 dots tall, and that's all of the space which um, Scratch can work in. On that stage, we have possible backdrops which we can create. We have then got characters that move around the stage using um, following commands that they're given in a script here. So, oh, and they can also have different costumes, so you can do some animation that way. So we have characters wearing costumes, following scripts as they move around a stage, which can have different backdrops. All of that language is reasonably familiar stuff, I'd hope. OK, let's go into the stage here and change the backdrop from this rather lovely snow scene to something else. I'm going to pick up a paintbrush, I'm going to paint yellow, and I'm going to have a go at painting something which looks a bit like a fish tank. Oops, so let's make that a little bit thicker to paint with. I'm just drawing something down the bottom here. OK, let's just check that that's gone all the way across. And then let's fill that in with yellow at the bottom here for the sand at the bottom of the fish tank. Green onto the paint brush and here comes a tree so far so easy or a frondy frondy thing I should say and here's another one coming in now there and let's put some water into the fish tank and we all know that water's blue don't we so there's some water in a fish tank now we've got a bit of a problem here in that we've got a cat in our fish tank and that's generally seen as a bad idea. So let's just delete the cat, say bye bye to the cat and we're gone. Now what would be more appropriate to put in a fish tank than a cat? Um, I know, let's put a fish in there. So I'm going to paint a new sprite. There are sprites available in the library but it's fun to paint your own. So far this is no more advanced than reception really because we could have done all of this a simple painting problem. And you see the little cross there, that's the centre of the sprite. And the default setting in Scratch is that sprites move off to the right hand side. So it's worth remembering that as you're painting them. So let's have a go. It's a rather cute clownfish here. This is much easier to do on an interactive whiteboard if you have one. Painting that in, and let's put some stripes on there, some white stripes, and some black stripes to go alongside those. One, two, three, and let's give them a little eye. There, how friendly is that then? OK, so now let's have a look at what we've got here. Let's make this a little bit larger so you can see what's going on. Now, so far, that's just really paint program, isn't it? But look, this object can move in front of the background images. So that's already a little bit more advanced than we can do with a paint program. Now, watch what happens. So here we've got a move instruction. So this is the scratch equivalent of Hello World, your first ever program. Let's have a look what happens when I click on this instruction. Watch the fish. Yeah, move 10 steps. Did you see it move? It didn't move very far, did it? There we go, and again. So that's just moving 10 dots on the screen. We call those pixels. And each dot of a computer screen or a computer image is made up of those tiny, tiny little dots. And they're very, very small on this screen here. So moving 10 steps just moves 10 steps, 10 dots. Turning 15 degrees, we can run these two commands together. That's a sequence of instructions. And let's see what that does. Moves and turns, moves and turns, moves and turns. Now I'm clicking on this, but we could get that to keep happening forever. So here's another. You see on the orange palette here, we have all of these lovely control blocks. And I just snap that around those, and that falls into place automatically. So have a look at what the program is here. Forever, move 10 steps, turn, move and turn. I hope you're making a prediction as to what that's going to do when I let that run. Isn't that wonderful? How exciting is that? OK, let's shrink him down a little. 
and let's duplicate this object and now we've got two fish there now that fish I'm going to turn round so instead of pointing let's have him pointing straight down and we don't need that command anymore now notice that both of these fish have the same set of commands attached to them. Let's see what happens when we run. Oh, one other thing here. This event here, the green flag is the usual way of starting Scratch programs. So there we have, when I click on the green flag, both of those programs should run. How lovely is that? I bet there's somebody with a birthday around about now. There we go. OK. So far, so easy. That's a lovely little introductory cartoon. We call that an animation. We've not really got any sort of interaction happening there. That's certainly not a game yet, is it? Well, let's see what we can do to make that a little bit more interesting. Let's put another fish in the fish tank. So again, I'm going to paint a new sprite. Let's get myself a little bit more screen real estate to work in. I've got some grey onto the paintbrush here. I wonder if you can see what it is yet. Okay, not very realistic, I'm sure. Big dorsal fin. And let's fill that in with some grey. Give him a black beady eye. There. And let's give him some sharp white teeth. And there. We have my initial impression of a shark in our fish tank. Okay. The shark hasn't got any scripts associated with him. I'm not sure that the scale is working particularly well. Let's shrink these down a little bit further. Okay. We can again give the shark some commands to follow. So again, click on the green flag, wait for things to happen. Let's have him doing something forever. And what I'm going to do with the shark is have him watch what happens on the keyboard. So we need to check if I'm pressing one key, do something. If I'm pressing another key, do something else. And we have those that ability to check what's happening on the keyboard over here in the sensing palette. So if I press the left arrow key, do one thing. If I press the right arrow key, oops, do something else. And what do I want him to do? Well, if I press the left arrow key, turn to the left seems like a good idea. If I press the right arrow key, turn to the right seems a good idea. Another thing about sharks is they have to keep on swimming, so I'm told. So let's have him continually swimming around the fish tank. And what happens when he gets to the edge? Well, we've got this rather nice if on edge bounce command. I'm going to put all of that inside this C-shaped forever loop. So just have a look at what we've got for the shark here. When I click on the green flag, keep doing this forever. Watch the left key, watch the right key, and keep moving. So let's have a look at how that works. OK. Oh, he's moving rather quickly. I'm moving from a somewhat unexpected place. We call this a bug. Let's go and fix that bug. The problem was that I didn't centre my drawing of the shark. So this one lets me put the costume centre there. Do you see it's gone totally the wrong place? Whereas now, centre of the shark should be the centre of the rotation. Fingers crossed that that's going to work a little better. And actually, I'm not sure that that 15 degrees was terribly helpful. Let's have him turning to a slightly smaller turn. So clicking on the green flag. And you'll get this with your own programmes a lot. That they don't work quite as you intend, at least initially. Now, this isn't a particularly authentic simulation of a fish tank, because what we have here Oh, that's the if on edge bounce coming in, isn't it? Okay. Well, we don't have what we have here is the two fish which seem to manage to survive, even when the shark gets them. I'm not sure that's terribly authentic. Let's see what we can do about that. Okay. So over on sprite one here, when click on the green flag, keep swimming forever. As I say, that's not exactly how it should be. So let's switch that forever to a repeat until. And repeat until touching the white of the shark's teeth. So we'll pop that in there, colour that in white. And then what? Well, then we'll die horribly 
or I just hide, just disappear at that point. Let's show up at the beginning of that. So click on the green flag up here, repeat until touching that, and then hide. Let's drag that across onto the other sprite, onto Sprite 2. Sprite 2, you'll see now, has two programs. That's really confusing. Let's get rid of the one that doesn't work and test our game. Clicking on the green flag. I've got one, got to catch them all, and got both. That's looking fine, isn't it? Okay, now how do we make this a little bit more interesting? How do we make this a little bit more exciting? Lots and lots of things which you can do. We could do sound effects. What I'm going to do is start keeping track of the score of how many fish I've managed to eat. So over here on the shark here, I'm going to set up right at the start of the game a variable called score. And a variable is like a box which stores a number in it. So we're going to set the score to zero right at the start of the game. When we catch fish number one, we're going to increase the score by one and then hide. Now we can make the fish reappear after a little while or be replaced by another fish, probably a better way of thinking about the simulation here, using another repeat command. So let's have here repeat forever this show, repeat until touching the shark, turn, increase the score, all of that. And then we'll have him wait a little while, I think a random amount of time, before he reappears. So pick a random number of seconds between, let's say, one and five seconds before reappearing. So does that make sense? We've got each time the shark eats him appear, Repeat until the shark gets him again, and then increase the score when he's eaten, disappear, and wait a few seconds before reappearing again. And that script, I'm going to drag on to the other sprite, and remember that when you do that, you've got to get rid of the one that you started with. So hopefully, we've now got something a little bit more interesting. That's got one of them, two of them. Okay, same thing going on. etc. Okay, oh and then they come back and I've still got to catch both of them. Okay, um, we've not really got any jeopardy in there, there's no challenge, it's just going to carry on forever as catching sharks. There are other ways to do that. What we can have going on here is a timer ticking away, counting down. And let's put that around this loop or let's have that running on the shark sprite as well so click on the green flag this is one of the lovely things about scratch that you can have sprites following two sets of instructions both at the same time repeat 10 and take one second off every time so that's going to go as a, so what it's going to do here is wait 10 seconds we could just actually have it waiting 10 seconds shall we have and then at the end of that we're going to have control stop all scripts at the end of that 10 we could actually have a game over statement here so say game over for two seconds Okay, let's have a go at that. One. And then it freezes. Okay, so we've got a score of three that time. And it wouldn't actually be too difficult to put in a high score there. If you want to see the time counting down, you're going to need another variable for that. So let's have another variable. Make a variable here called time, oops, for all sprites, and set the time to 10 up at the beginning of the game. Wait, and then rather than waiting 10 seconds, we're going to have that counting down in one second block. So repeating 10 times, waiting a second, and then changing the time by minus one. Say so game over. Those two seconds at the end were a bit weird, so let's just have that as 0.5 of a second. 
and a final version of this. Then notice the timer clicking away. Three. And there's another one back. And there's time up with a score of four this time. OK, I'm sure you've got plenty of ideas of how you could do something very similar to this or something a lot more exciting than this yourself. But I'm going to stop the recording now.